Now straight into the war zone where doctors are overwhelmed, out of supplies and struggling to care for their patients in hospitals they say are now completely surrounded by Israeli tanks. Thousands of people fleeing Al Shifa Hospital following a series of explosions that hit in and around several medical centers across the city overnight. An international committee of the Red Cross Chief Surgeon Tom Podokar has witnessed it all firsthand, not only trying to save lives, but also also documenting his experience inside the European Gaza hospital as he operates around the clock and within every airstrike. So the situation here is getting increasingly desperate. Uh, we've had a further seven admissions overnight. Uh, we've had to close the ice intensive care units part in the hospital where we are because there's not enough electricity. Uh, we had a patient on the table this morning, a young child with full fitness deep burn to the right arm who may well lose his uh, arm wounds infested with maggots and um, serious wound on the head as well. Uh, not as safe as it should be by any circumstances due to the lack of resources. Just a heart-wrenching description. Dr. Potokar joining me now by phone from South Gaza. Dr. Potokar, you have been in surgeries, I know, all day long. Can you start by just describing what it's been like in the hospital for you today. Yeah, um, thanks for, for asking me. Yes, so the, um, well, it's been a, a busy a busy day. Um, we had numerous dressing changes to do for the many, many burns patients we have here, and uh, not done under ideal circumstances, um, but we just have to do the best we can. I mean, the way we're treating burns is, is really stepping back. 40, 50 years. You know, obviously we, we, we're in for about 12 hours of the day, um, but it's it's relentless, you know, and it's it's just not uh, it's not slowing down at all. And I know that you have been treating a lot of children uh, with those burns. I know they've been pulled from the rubble. They've been coming in to your operating room. It's heart wrenching just to read your descriptions of these kids. But doctor, if you don't mind, could you please humanize these children for us and tell us what you've witnessed? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're just, yeah, they're just uh, terribly, terribly, sad stories and every day brings new ones. I mean, the, the, the youngest we have with burn injuries is four months old. Um, and then children of, you know, of all ages, a lot of toddlers, you know, sort of two, three-year-olds and, and, you know, more those going up uh, to, to more, you know, obviously a little bit older. A lot of them have burns involving the face as well um, and the limbs. Uh, these could be quite deep burns, as I say, so will lead to significant scarring potentially in the future if, if they actually survive. Um, and the, the tragedy of them is, is that it, it's not, unfortunately, it's not unusual to find that the child is being cared for by not a family member, but, you know, perhaps a friend of the family or even just somebody else entirely because their whole family has been, been killed. Um, and that, unfortunately, is not is not a sort of one-off case that's that's you know a, quite a regular occurrence uh, we have a, a a lovely gentleman who's been carrying a small baby around for the last few days every day he comes up to us we've been doing dressing changes on this child under general anesthetic and i'm pleased to say in this case because they were not too deep um you know he's he's pulling through he's getting better um but you just see this this man who's not not a family member, you know, and he tells us that has no family, has no family. Um, you know, this this child is two years old. So that, and that's the type of story we have. And we've we've been reporting on that. I mean, these children that have lost all their family members. I know that you're witnessing that firsthand too. You operated on someone who lost 20 members of their family. It's just it's it's. It's hard, it's hard to read, it's hard to see, it's hard to listen to, which leads me to my next question. What do you make of this idea that the heavy strikes on Gaza are actually being used as a form of deterrence by Israel in an attempt to send a message to Hamas and the idea that everything inside Gaza is considered a military target, including these hospitals, including the one you're working in? 
Well, listen, I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a doctor, I'm a surgeon, I'm a humanitarian, I'm neither a politician nor a military person. Um, I, I, you know, frankly, I'm not, it's not that I'm not interested, but it, what, you know, who's doing what to whom is not the issue for me. The issue for me is the patient that's in front of me and the, the wounds that they have got and treating that patient wherever they're from and however they got injured. Um, what's all behind that, of course, and what is perpetuating it and what is causing this enormous, enormous human suffering is a whole, you know, different, different discussion, if you like. Um, but that's, that's uh, you know, from my point of view, as I say, what I'm concerned with is, is just treating those that, that, uh, that come to us on a, on a daily basis. And I can only report, if you like, on, on facts, you know, I'm... I'm Yes. Brought up in a, you know, the medical profession, which is based on science and facts, not speculation. So I can just say the facts, you know, this is what I'm seeing. I'm untold suffering and a, a huge, yeah, huge numbers of injuries and, and, uh, and uh, the type of stories that I'm just telling you. These are just facts. How has this medical mission impacted you, not just as a doctor, but a human being? Well, it's, um, I mean, I've been to Gaza many times in the past and I, I have, you know, it is never, this is far, far worse. It's a completely different stratosphere from how I've ever come across it before. And that includes being here in 2021 for the short conflict then in 2018 for the, the all the, the, those injured by, um, by gunshot wounds on the Great March of Return, but this is a completely different uh, scenario. And of course, it's 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 uh, yeah, it's emotionally extremely draining. It's physically tiring, and it's it's uh, yeah, it's depressing when you see this. You know, this is the 21st century, and this is where humanity seems to have got us into a position where, for whatever reasons, you know, there is still so much suffering and, and, and so much pain in the world and, and people who, you know, these are all somebody's brother, sister, mother, father, daughter, whatever, you know, and when you put it on that personal level and I have children myself, uh, you know, and then when you just think about it like that, it is, it is deeply, deeply troubling for, frankly, for the future of humanity. Well, the patients are lucky to have you there. International Committee of the Red Cross Chief Surgeon Tom Podokar, we are so thankful that you called in to us from Gaza. Please keep doing all the good work that you're doing. We appreciate you so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.